Power began in 2000 with one horse and four riders um, based out of a need to work with one of my children who presented with minor special needs. Through research, therapeutic riding popped up as a wonderful adjunct approach to helping her meet those challenges. Um, and as a lifelong equestrian and social worker, it seemed like the perfect fit. So we went from one horse and four riders to four horses and 20 riders, and we bought a farm in Mawa, and the farm has continued to serve the population in our community. This past year, we expanded our footprint and bought the property where we're sitting right now, which added an extra three acres with office space and new, a new barn to expand programming on the ground, which is a non-riding program. And we've yet to find a population where horses cannot affect positive change in a human's life. So Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock is Olivia's riding time. It's been her riding time for the past several semesters. I can't even tell you, it's probably almost two years. We're told by her parents that she wakes up in the morning, knows what day it is, and basically continues to ask when is the time to go to Pony Power. It's such a good job. It's almost time. Almost time. I'm gonna take you over to eat, okay? Her instructor, Abigail, will come and greet Olivia, help her get her equipment on, her helmet and her belt. We'll take her hand and walk her up to the arena. Uh, we have a mounting ramp where everyone gets on the horse. Olivia will get on her horse, Evie, who's this beautiful Norwegian fjord. There is a lead walker for the horse, a side walker on one side, who's a volunteer and the instructor. And right away, she will be cued to her different commands, which would be Three, two, one, walk on to go. One, two, three, whoa, to stop. One, two, three, whoa. Good job. And that's all the commands that everyone at Pony Power learns, whether you're verbal or nonverbal, child or adult. Those are our basic commands, so there's that consistency and repetition. She'll then move on to some stretches, which is really helping her find her center on the back of a horse and isolate and follow directions, one hand up, the other hand up, both hands up. So really learning, rather than through words, but through feel, what it's like to be on the back of a horse and what muscles have to kick in and what sensory awareness she has to have at that moment. And then every lesson has an individualized plan that she's working on a progression of horseback riding skills that are appropriate to her. So she's learning now in a saddle to do what's called two-point or jumping position, which is a really tough balance to do, but she does it beautifully. She's learning how to steer and hold her reins and isolate her trunk from her arms. So lots of multi-step directions that we know have a therapeutic goal and a therapeutic quality too, but she's learning how to ride a horse. So that's kind of that sneaky way that it's a therapeutic opportunity, but it's a recreational sport that we hope will be a lifelong sport. This is unbelievable. One, two, three. Wow. Wow. Here's Hannah again. So it's really the input from the environment, from the movement, and from being on the back of a horse that's reacting as if a human reacts. So they, they breathe, they sneeze, they startle, they react to different sounds, um, and they also react to the way the ground is. If there's some dips and valleys or ups and downs, the horse is going to react. So it's a very um, sensory rich, kind of invigorates your body, if you will. Is Evie a girl? Yeah. Good. Three, two, one. Last time. One, two, three, four, five. And so there's that mindfulness that when working with our different therapists and doctors say is so important that being present and being mindful that helps with stress reduction. Less stress leads to less inflammation, perhaps less uh, effects from medications and a whole host of other benefits that you would get from being mindful, being present, being out in nature and interacting with nature.